Well, we often hear that the United States of America is a divided country, uh, but that has always sounded uh, like an understatement compared to what we have going on right now. You know, Joe Biden has talked a, a fair amount in recent weeks about the importance of unifying the country. I pledge to be a president who seeks not to divide, but unify. It has to be said that there was more of that rhetoric at the time that it seemed like the Republicans might hold on to the Senate. Uh, that isn't the case uh, now. The Democrats have a clean sweep. They've got Congress, the Senate, they've got the White House. Uh, and it is noticeable uh, that in recent days there has been more divisive talk, not just from Joe Biden, but from the leadership of the Democratic Party, uh, than talk of unity. Uh, we've seen Nancy Pelosi and other senior Democrats attempt a second impeachment uh, of Donald Trump. Uh, we have seen uh, Joe Biden make some really quite astonishing pronouncements. He issued a video last week in which he talked about the importance of helping American business owners, small businesses that have been suffering through the coronavirus crisis. And he said that his administration had great sympathy for small business owners who had been suffering in the last year. But, and this is what he said. Our priority will be black, Latino, Asian, and Native American owned small businesses, women owned businesses. And this is very, very interesting uh, because this is an echo of the rhetoric you hear from the radical left of Joe Biden's party, which divides up America like everything else in the world along ethnic and racial and gender sex lines. Uh, that isn't the language of unity. It is the language of division. Uh, America at the moment does not need its new president to be dividing the country up along ethnic lines and talking about who it should be prioritizing along ethnic or sex lines. It needs a president to do what Joe Biden has said in the past that he would do, which is to unite the country. The great worry in America uh, has always been the growing division, the growing echo chambers, among other things. Uh, what we see isn't just a difference of opinion between left and right, Democrat and Republican, over their interpretation of events, but increasingly a disagreement over events, over what they've seen. Significant uh, numbers of Democrats uh, believe that Donald Trump wasn't legitimately elected in 2016. Uh, they tried for years, senior Democrats, to prove and didn't prove uh, that there'd been Russian meddling or hacking of the election and much more. Uh, so they didn't believe that Donald Trump was legitimate president. The latest polls show the majority of uh, Trump voters from uh, November 2020 uh, still uh, don't believe that Joe Biden was legitimately elected in a free and fair election. This is a very important issue for the world's foremost democracy, the most powerful, richest democracy in the world to be stuck in. So the most important thing, I think in a way, practically outside of foreign policy, would be to ensure that whatever happens in the next presidential election, indeed in the midterms, that both sides agree uh, on the result. Otherwise, what we see in America is two groups, not just with different interpretations of events, but with different beliefs, different realities. Uh, they will continue to dig down in these. And of course, America has the most heavily armed citizenry of any country in the world. It has the Second Amendment. Uh, it is a country which has to find a way to unify. It has to find a way to reach across the divides that exist uh, because the digging down that we have seen in recent years from both sides of the political aisle is something that could yet lead to an absolute catastrophe. We have to stop treating our opponents as our enemies. They are not our enemies. They are Americans. They are Americans. I think perhaps number one, uh, policy to look out for in the Biden administration will be what is the new administration's attitude towards China? Um, Joe Biden, uh, over the many decades of his political career, um, has been keen on doing business with China. He indeed was one of the leading senators who was involved with some of the trade deals, which the Trump administration, among others, 
said massively uh, disadvantaged American workers. China is taking advantage of this country like nobody has ever taken advantage of the United States. The Trump administration did something very unusual in the uh, in the last few decades. It saw China not as a competitor, but as an unfair competitor, that it was undercutting the uh, uh, American workers. It was, uh, as a result, able to take business away unfairly to its own country. And we should remember that China, run by the Chinese Communist Party, is accused, among other things, of running factories that undercut foreign workers that are actually in China uh, manned by unpaid and indeed slave labor. So this is a massive human rights as well as a geostrategic and indeed an American economic issue. Donald Trump and his Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo in particular, made a huge issue of this. We want every nation to work together to push back against the Chinese Communist Party's uh, efforts in every dimension that I described to you today. The question now is whether the Biden administration attaches all, as it were, uh, um, CCP, that's Chinese Communist Party hostile policies, uh, ties them so much with the Trump administration that it decides that it will just simply reverse all of that and run away from that. I, I think a lot of people would see that as a mistake. It would be a case of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, but as the American economy and all other econo economies in the world try to dig ourselves out of the hole uh, that was caused by the coronavirus that emanated from China last year, the attitude of the American president towards China towards trade with China, human rights attitudes towards China, and much more is going to be perhaps the, the issue of the absolutely utmost significance.